So now I will uh, actually talk about the pseudomonas. So basically, the pseudomonas it is actually a gram negative bacilli. Suppose if uh, this is a gram negative, so suppose this is a pseudomonas. On gram staining, it is a gram, you can see that it is a gram negative bacilli and there will be a flagella from there will be flagella from one pole so it is a monotrichus it is having a monotrichus flagella so it is actually a motile one and this pseudomonas it is so basically this pseudomonas it is actually not having any capsule but instead of this capsule they are having a layer of glycocalyx and this actually instead they are actually producing a slime so this slime it will help in the formation of biofilms so in this pseudomonas there are no capsules instead they actually produces a saline that help in the formation of forming a biofilm and uh, from there is a special character that you can actually differentiate from other pseudomonas species that is the pseudomonas aeruginosa it has the ability to grow at 42 degree celsius whereas in all other pseudomonas species this special feature is absent and the pseudomonas species so they are having certain enzymes so one of the enzymes is catalase so they are positive for catalase test so what is basically a catalase test so when you are adding hydrogen peroxide in the presence of the enzyme catalase it is converted into water and oxygen and the bubbles of oxygen are formed in this reaction so a catalase enzyme is present so it is catalase positive it uh, the, there is another enzyme that is called oxidase so in the pseudomonas the oxidase enzyme is also positive so the, the they will show oxidative test positive but what is this oxidative oxidase test so this image is showing the oxidase test it is actually detecting the presence of the cytochrome oxidase enzyme that is present in the bacteria so if the cytochrome oxidase enzyme is present in the bacteria that means it will catalyze the oxidation of the reduced cytochrome by atmospheric oxygen and the positive will appear deep purple whereas the negative there won't be any color change the same so the pseudomonas is basically oxidative oxidase enzyme positive so now about the utilization of sugar so actually this pseudomonas it is a strict aerobe so it utilizes the sugar by oxidative means that is there is oxidative utilization of sugar as the bacteria the pseudomonas it is a non fastidious bacteria that means it actually does not require any special media so it can be cultured in simple culture media such as you can culture on a nutrient agar and so you can see that this is the appearance in the nutrient agar there is actually a green pigmentation so when you culture them it will be mostly mucoid colonies it is because they are actually having a slime layer and due to this slime layer 
there will be mucoid colonies and the they will the pseudomonas they will actually produces certain pigments so the pseudomonas they will actually produce a blue green pigment and that blue green pigment is called a pyocyanin pyocyanin it also produce a yellow if it produce a yellow green pigment it can be called as pyoverdin pyoverdin if it is producing a red pigment it can be called as pyorubin and if it produces a brown pigment it is called pyomelanin you can also culture it in the blood agar so if you are culturing on the blood agar it produces a beta hemolytic colonies and if you are using a mac conkey medium as the pseudomonas is non lactose fermenting it actually produces a pale colored colonies and the selective media for the pseudomonas it is a cetrimide agar so now talking about the virulence factor of the pseudomonas so suppose this i have said that this is a pseudomonas bacteria and the pseudomonas is having a slime this slime will act as a virulence factor so how this slime will act as a virulence factor it it can actually form a biofilms so if it forms a biofilm then the entry of antibiotics is reduced and the presence of this slime help in anti give it give anti phagocytic action that is it is difficult to phagocyte and it will also help to adhere for addition to some part to some regions so it will also uh, it will also help in addition of this pseudomonas another virulence factor is uh, the presence of fimbri or you can say a type 4 pili and the type 4 pili in this bacteria pseudomonas bacteria it will help in a twitching motility so that twitching motility it is actually independent of flagella so that can uh, uh, this fimbri or this pili, uh, pili that is present in this pseudomonas bacteria it can act as virulence factor so another virulence factor as this is a gram negative bacteria the lipopolysaccharide or the endotoxins that is present in this bacteria it can also act as a virulence factor then this can actually secrete certain enzymes certain toxins so such secretion systems that is you have type 1 type 2 type 3 secretion systems that will actually uh, that will also act as a virulence factor then uh, there is uh, in this pseudomonas i have said that there is flagella that is monotrichous flagella so that flagella also act as a virulence factor and this flagella also helps in addition okay now saying about the virulence factors of this pseudomonas that are extra cellular so one is the proteases so the proteases include certain elastases which break the elastic tissues elastases that is last a b then you have alkaline proteases another virulence factor is toxins so this will actually uh, secrete this will actually produce exotoxin a so the mechanism of action of the exotoxin a is similar to diphtheria toxins that is these exotoxin a 
they will actually inhibit the protein synthesis but how how this protein synthesis is inhibited so in the protein synthesis synthesizing machinery there is a role of elongation factor 2 so what this exotoxin a will do is they will actually do adp ribosylation of the elongation factor 2 so the protein synthesis becomes inhibited then another toxin is the exoenzymes the exoenzyme s t u so this also act as a virulence factor so now about the virulence uh, hemolysin is another virulence factor for example the phospholipase the rhamnolipids so they also act as a virulence factor so then uh, another one is a siderophore so what is this si- how the siderophore will act help uh, act as a virulence factor so this siderophore in this pseudomonas bacteria it actually help to acquire iron for the pseudomonas so even the pyocyanin can also act as a virulence factor it actually eliminate the toxic oxygen free uh, oxygen radicals this pyocyanins so speaking about the pseudomonas they are actually normal soil saprophytes but uh, sometimes uh, they can be uh, found in humans as uh, normal commensals in most of the areas especially in the ear where there is moist moisture in the ears axilla and the perineal areas so in the environment they are actually present in large numbers even in the it can be divided into communities and in hospitals so in the community the pseudomonas is found in the soil in the natural water bodies then also in artificial water bodies so artificial water bodies which includes the swimming pools then home humidifiers then something called as jacuzzi so jacuzzi is a, a it's like a bathtub uh, that is uh, actually for there is actually jacuzzi is somewhat similar to actually the bathtub so in the hospitals so in the hospitals these pseudomonas they will be present in the sink in the mops and uh, the uh, the equipments that are in used in the respiratory therapy so even the endoscopes etc so they all they all Uh, may contain this pseudomonas so now talking about the clinical manifestations of the pseudomonas so it can basically cause a community infection as well as a nosocomial infection a nosocomial infection means infection that is hospital acquired so what are the community now i will be discussing about the community infections so in people who are actually using a contact lens so the people who are using contact lens they will develop corneal ulcers due to this pseudomonas uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa and so the people who are uh, more playing in the swimming pools they will actually develop hot tub folliculitis or jacuzzi syndrome so this is what is called as hot tub folliculitis so this pseudomonas they also can cause hot hand and foot syndrome it is uh, because when they are exposed their hands and foot are exposed in water for more time which are having this pseudomonas pseudomonas so another thing is so this pseudomonas it can actually cause especially in the iv drug abusers so people who are iv drug abusers they can cause infective endocarditis it can cause septic arthritis and even osteomyelitis and so the people who likes a lot of 
for swimming so they will and if uh, there is unfortunately this pseudo uh, pseudomonas bacteria are present in that swimming pool in the ear they will develop they may develop simple otitis externa due to that is swimmer's ear due to this pseudomonas aeruginosa sometimes it is more uh, in diabetics especially in the diabetics it is more seen that this they develop malignant otitis externa or necrotizing otitis externa uh, and actually there will be a discharge of uh, pus in this malignant otitis externa it's more uh, see uh, it's more severe condition than the simple otitis externa and uh, this pseudomonas it can actually uh, involve the nails that is peronychia it can cause peronychia and it can actually cause uh, is the pseudomonas multiply uh, is present below the at the nail bed in and around the nail bed it can cause a green nail syndrome and that is called uh, chloronychia that is called chloronychia so about the nosocomial infection that is a hospital acquired infections include so if a person is uh, having a burn burns so superimposed to that the infection uh, if there is an infection with a gram negative organism the most common organism to be involved are the pseudomonas yeah and in even the hospital acquired pneumonia or the ventilator acquired pneumonia the most common gram negative organism to be the causative agent is a pseudomonas aeruginosa it can also cause the urinary tract infection with char catheter induced catheter associated then it can cause uh, the surgical site infections then there will be a septicemia and the septicemia will be with very high mortality rate and it actually manifest as uh, there will be a gangrene like that is a blackish that is called uh, particularly called ectaema gangrenosa and it is especially seen in uh, people who are admitted in the icu uh, who are actually immune deficient this ectaema gangrenosa so this pseudomonas so they can actually develop resistance basically uh, talking about there is actually intrinsic resistance as well as acquired resistance sometimes that uh, that is they acquire in the lifetime so what is this intrinsic resistance that is the resistance that is already present so one mechanism is by the outer membrane permeability is low it is because the outer membrane protein that is helping in the transport it is low the second mechanism is by the production of certain lactamases beta lactamases that is a chromosome mediated beta lactamases production and it will actually hydrolyze the beta lactams that is a penicillins then this bacteria that is a pseudomonas they will actually develop a certain efflux pump that is when antibiotic come they will efflux out so then about the acquired resistance so talking about the acquired resistance uh, it can be achieved by horizontal gene transfer that is actually by the formation of the conjugation tube and even sometimes it can be a mutation driver so this is how the bacterial resistance are being developed so the pseudomonas is actually a notorious infection so it is actually a resistance to most of the antibiotics the antibiotics that are sensitive for the pseudomonas that is anti pseudomonal antibiotics are you can use the fluoroquinolones and you can also use aminoglycosides then the extended spectrum cephalosporins that is the third generation cephalosporin fourth generation cephalosporins you can use carbapenems then you can use a combination of piperacillin and tazobactam then so when you will say that 
this pseudomonas bacteria it is actually a multi drug resistance so to call it as a multi drug resistance it must be resistance to three or more drug of these antimicrobial classes then you can call it as multi drug resistance so to be strictly speaking how the mode of resistance is developing for example if it is a penicillin that is a beta lactam this pseudomonas it will produce a beta lactamase if it is the antibiotic is aminoglycoside the mechanism of the pseudomonas is they will actually modify the antibiotic the, they will actually modify this aminoglycoside then they will uh, have efflux pump to throw out the aminoglycoside then actually they will uh, reduce the its entry of the aminoglycoside and they will also modify the target so that the aminoglycoside cannot binds to the target so in case of fluoroquinolone they are having a flux pump as well as they will modify the target so in case of fluoroquinolone the dna gyrase is a target so basically fluoroquinolones are dna gyrase inhibitors so by modification of the target they can achieve this resistance so that is all about the pseudomonas infections thank you